this video, we'll show you how to use Microsoft Word's referencing function to ensure that your in-text citations and bibliography are 100% on point. We'll walk you through the entire process step-by-step step using real-world examples so that you can reference like a pro. Let's do it. Hey, Emma here from GradCoach. Here's a quick overview of how we'll structure this tutorial. First, we'll show you how to add your sources to Word's Reference Manager and insert citations into your document as you write. We'll also look at how to use temporary placeholders to help streamline your writing process. From there, we'll explain how to create a perfectly formatted reference list or bibliography in just a few seconds. Last but certainly not least, we'll take a quick look at the Source Manager and show you how to avoid a really common but costly pitfall that students make. And so, without further delay, let's jump into it. All right, so the first thing that you need to know is that the reference management functionality is only available on the desktop version of Word, not the online version. If you don't have access to the desktop version, you'll need to look at alternative reference managers such as Mendeley or Zotero. These are both free to use and we have detailed explainer videos covering them as well. You can find the links to those in the description. Right, so the first thing you'll need to do is set the citation style. For example, APA or MLA. To do this, navigate to the tab labeled References and click the drop-down menu labeled Style. As you can see here, Word allows for APA, MLA, Chicago, Harvard, and a few other styles. If you're looking for a style that's not included here, you'll want to check out Mendeley or Zotero as they offer a lot more styles and greater flexibility in terms of formatting. Once you've selected your style, you can start adding your sources. So let's look at how to do that. Let's say you've got this body of text and you want to cite a source for a sentence. In that case, you'll place the cursor exactly where you want to insert the citation and add a space to accommodate it. Then you'll navigate the tab labeled References and click Insert Citation. As you can see, you now have the option to create a new source, which requires a few different fields. Importantly, you'll need to fill in each of these fields very carefully making sure that the data are 100% accurate. If you insert incorrect information at this stage, your citations and reference list or bibliography will reflect that. In other words, rubbish in, rubbish out. Once you've filled out the mandatory fields, you can click the OK button, or you can check Show All to add additional information. When you're done, click OK, and you'll see that the citation is inserted exactly where you placed the cursor previously. If you want to edit the look of the citation, for example, if you want to add or remove elements, include a page number, et cetera, just click on the citation, open the drop down, and select edit this citation. It's important to understand that doing this will only edit this specific instant of the citation and won't change any of the underlying resource data. If you want to make changes to the resource itself, you can do that too. Just click on the citation again and select edit source. As you can see, this allows you to edit all of the information as you did when you first created the citation. Of course, any changes you make here will have an impact throughout your document. So keep that in mind. Once you've added a source, it will be stored in Word's master list of sources, which means you can easily access it in the future. For example, if you wanted to add the same citation later in your document, you can just place your cursor in the relevant spot, then click citations, and then select that source from the list. While we're here, I want to tell you about another useful bit of functionality called placeholders. If you're busy writing up a document and you know that you need to add a citation for a specific sentence, but don't yet have a source ready to cite, you can use a placeholder and then fill in the information later. To do this, just select insert citation and leave all the fields blank. You can then come back to it later once you have a suitable source. To update the info, just click on the placeholder and select Edit Source, same as you would a real source. All right, so once you've added your in-text citations throughout your document, the next thing you'll probably want to do is create a list of references, or what Word calls a bibliography. To do this, place your cursor wherever you want to insert the reference list, usually at the end of the document, and then click the Bibliography button. As you can see, Word offers two options here, Bibliography and Works Cited. If you're not sure what your university prefers, check with them first. Markers 
authors can be really sticky about these fine details. If you need a completely different title, don't stress, you can edit the wording manually afterwards. Whichever option you choose, Word will then automatically generate the full reference list, perfectly formatted according to whichever style you choose. This saves you a huge amount of time. But remember, the data accuracy depends on what you inserted originally. So make sure you insert the right info. As a tip, it's generally a good idea to copy and paste this info directly from each article to ensure it's 100% correct. All right, so now that we've covered how to create in-text citations and a bibliography, there's just one more thing you need to know about, and that is the source manager. Simply put, the source manager is the home base of all your reference data within Microsoft Word. It's where you can view and edit all the source information you've ever added to Word, regardless of whether that source features in the document you're currently working on. To access the source manager, click the three-dot menu in the citation bar, followed by Citation Source Manager. As you can see, there are two sides to the Source Manager, the Master List and the Current List. As the name suggests, the Master List contains all the sources you've ever added to Word, while the Current List reflects the sources you've cited in the specific document you're working on right now. If you'd like to use a source from a previous document, simply track down the source in the Master List and click the Copy button to copy it over to the Current List. You'll then be able to access that source in the citation sidebar. Within the source manager, you can also add new sources, delete old ones, and of course, make changes to existing sources. One thing to keep in mind though, is that when you edit a source, it won't automatically update in your document. To update your document, select any citation or the reference list, click the drop down menu, and then hit the update option. It's a good idea to get into the habit of always hitting that refresh button at the end of any writing session, even if you didn't update any sources. All right, so that covers the ABCs of how to manage references in Word. As you can see, Word's referencing functionality is admittedly rather basic, and adding source info is quite a slow, error-prone process. So if you're looking for a better option, you'll definitely want to consider some free alternatives such as Mendeley and Zotero. As I mentioned, we've got detailed explainer videos covering both of those, links in the description. If you got value from this tutorial, please hit that like button so that more students can find this resource. If you wanna learn more about academic writing and research, be sure to subscribe to the Grad Coach channel and also check out the Grad Coach blog, where you can find tons of free resources, tools, and guides to fast track your academic writing. Until next time, good luck.